Hello and welcome to the Thursday, June 15th, 2023 edition of the Sand and its Storm Center's Stormcast. My name is Johannes Ulrich and today I'm recording from Jacksonville, Florida. Today I would like to start out to thank all the malware authors that keep coming up with interesting obfuscation techniques for Didier to reverse. Today Didier is looking at an obfuscated Visual Basic script and shows how to well use a combination of standard command line tools like starting out with grep and the like and then quickly moving to Didier's own uh, public domain tools like research.py and sets.py to then further manipulate the payload and uh, reverse engineer it in order to obtain the deobfuscated uh, script. Pretty nice uh, analysis and as usual highly recommended if this is the kind of work that you like to do or have to do as part of your day job. Researchers from the Ruhr University of Bochum uh, did publish a paper outlining some weaknesses in the Microsoft Office OpenOffice XML signature. Despite the name OpenOffice, uh, Microsoft Office documents are created using the OpenOffice XML standard, which, well, is a rather complex standard. Uh, if you ever looked at an Office document, it's usually a zip file, actually, when you're looking at the .docx file that contains a number of different XML files. The problem with these signatures is that uh, they allow for only some of these files to be signed. So an attacker, of course, may alter any files that are not signed and with that, of course, change the content that's displayed to the user. For example, what fonts are being used is not typically part of the signed parts. Changing fonts, of course, will easily then allow an attacker to change what's being displayed as the user opens the document without actually alerting the user of a changed or broken signature. There are various attack scenarios that are outlined in the paper. Uh, too much to really adequately summarize it here in this podcast. If you are interested, well, the link to the paper can be found in the show notes. But overall, they basically come to the conclusion that uh, these uh, signatures are not really serving the purpose that they're supposed to, which is kind of to verify that the document is authentic. Then we got a little uh, follow up from Microsoft regarding a patch uh, Tuesday, and that's regarding the fix for CVE 2023-32019. It's an important vulnerability. It does allow the disclosure of kernel memory to unprivileged users still has to have a valid account so still has to be authenticated, just not as an administrator or anything like that. The trick here is that the patch for this vulnerability is included in the June update, but it's not enabled by default. You have to set a specific registry key to enable it. Not clear why Microsoft decided not to enable it by default. Maybe they were afraid of some performance issues or uh, some undesired sort of interactions with some software. But uh, it may, and that's, again, Microsoft speaking, be enabled in a future security release uh, by default. So you may enable it now manually, or you may want to wait a couple of months and let Microsoft sort of work out the kinks in that patch, at least sort of how it sounds uh, to me. I think this is not sort of one of those super critical vulnerabilities that you absolutely must patch, so you can wait a while and see if anybody is reporting any undesired uh, side effects of this patch. And then in other miscellaneous news, yes, uh, fake exploits on GitHub are still a thing. A wall check has a story about that uh, where apparently attackers are specifically impersonating researchers and are setting up fake uh, GitHub uh, repos in order to make their malicious exploits, malicious in the sense that they exploit the person running the exploit. So they're trying to make uh, these uh, exploits more plausible. 
And security company Lex4 released additional details regarding the FortiGate uh, SSL VPN vulnerability. This is something that apparently has already been exploited and uh, given the additional details, definitely something that you better patched uh, yesterday. And finally, there are also some updates for Zoom fixing mostly some privilege escalation type vulnerabilities. Well, that's it for today. Just a quick heads up uh, as to my schedule next week. The Monday, June 19th will be the Juneteenth uh, holiday. So there will be no podcast on uh, Monday. I'll also be doing some uh, traveling uh, next week and likely won't be able to publish a podcast on a Wednesday as well. Thanks for listening and talk to you again tomorrow. Bye.